Hello, my little goblins. We're back at it again, and this time we're playing generators because we the boss. We the boss, baby. Dale. No, I'm kidding, but uh, <laughs> uh, this deck is uh, it's gotten a lot better. It was pretty bad before where people were just really relying on just like, I play generator boss stage, pass. Where now this deck has a lot of legs because of the new card Vala, which is just a normal rare, which is kind of hilarious. And the other card that's really crazy is their new boss monster, which is Lavatean. Which this card is absolutely crazy. Like, this card is so good. Let's just read the effect. So, you can only control one of them. Your opponent loses attack, defense, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. The quick effect. You contribute this card. Special summon one non-fairy generator XZ monster from your extra deck. Then attach ca any cards from any field or graveyard to... S that special summon mod. So what you could essentially do with this is it's good against tier limit because this card uh, can suck up the tier uh, the tier limit cards of trying to activate their effects. But if your opponent plays just like playing against runic and your opponent plays uh, the runic field spell, kind of activate the field spell, right? Like to to draw. So you activate L Lavatan, right? You can you summon Yogenmeyer or whatever this card is, and then this card will attach their field spell and another card that they have, maybe another runic card that they have in the graveyard, and uh, yeah, I'll have like 2,000 attack, and you also have another effect here, where you detach a card, each player draws a card, and then each player has to attach a card from their hand or field to this card. So there's like two annoying effects into one. Uh, also, if you use this on your turn while you have Generator Boss Stage up, it, since they drew a card, it does force them to, it forces uh, Boss Stage to activate so we can summon, like, one of our uh, Generator Boss Monsters. So, overall, the card's really, really good. So, I'm going to show you guys uh, our main, like, the best board this deck can possibly put out. And then you guys are going to see some games, and then we'll talk about in the recap, like, how this deck performed. These games are all going to take place in Masters, so, I mean, it's the probably the area you guys are trying to climb it, climb to, or climb out of, to climb to Master 1, so let's uh, let's get to it. Hello, we're here with the combo guide, and this this hand is full combo. The way you would do full combo here would be you normal some Diviner. Uh, there's two combos you can do with Diviner. I'm going to show you this one because this is what we need to do to do our combo that's, like, really strong. Uh, we're going to send uh, Hard to the Graveyard. Follow is going to activate. We're going to grab this boy. We're going to activate his effect. Tribute. Here comes Mardell. Bardell's going to activate and it's going to grab our boss stage. Now we can use this. This card's key for you to get this board. This You have to have this card. Do not bother trying this board if you do not have this. Okay? So this is going to allow us to special summon this. And we'll be able to get uh, this onto the field. So here, it's like, this is like super toxic, by the way. This is like our toxic hand. Activate, banish a card. Okay, so we see we banish one of his cards. Banish another one of his cards. Now we're going to go into Utopic Draco Future. Ideally, we would uh, get rid of... Uh, we would have used this too, but I mean, we just can't really, so... Maybe just play Boss Stage. So we hand-ripped him twice, and then we pass. Now Generate Boss Stage activates. Uh, there's two combos you can do here. I prefer maybe we should have grabbed Nidhog, uh, probably because uh, it can activate off of itself. But uh, I think personally, I would rather do this. So you summon Yalavala, and then you have to chain link one this, and then you chain link two here. And what this is gonna do, you can pretty much 
pretty much between Utah, uh, Utgar. I'm gonna pick Har because Har is like on average better than most of the other ones, and this deck really struggles with uh, evenly match. So this at least gives you one spell and trap negate. There goes our cards. And now we are good to go. Kind of be a little cheeky here. Here's Baron. There's other ways of going into Baron, by the way. The main way you go into Baron with this deck is actually through Diviner. But you guys are going to see that within my match, my matches. But yeah, this is pretty much how you do the combo. And um, yeah, I, I just, I don't really go into this combo that much into the matches. So I'd rather just show you guys so you guys know how to do it. All right. Just make sure you know you need monstrosity for it to work. All right. Let's get into the actual match. Hello. We're here with game number one. And uh, our hand opening hand is actually pretty good. We have Ash, which is nice in case he has Max C. This, you're, you guys are about to see, this is the Baron de Fleur combo. So, we just set up Baron de Fleur, Diviner searches out level 1 tuner, and then boom. Free Baron. And now we're going to go into Vala. Vala brings this card back. This card back is going to go into Mardell. Um, Mardell is going to get boss stage. And, okay, so, I want to talk about this. Uh, I go for the hand rip. And you guys have to remember, I play this deck on stream. So I always ask the stream, I'm like, do you guys want me hand rip or do you want me go the boss monster? And everyone always wants me to hand rip because they want to see if I hit like a devastating card or something. Uh, but I do actually think in this per this particular, since if you're not able to use like double Phantom Fortress, most of the time, I'm going to say going into the boss monster is just going to be infinitely better because it's it sucks two cards up, which is like crazy good. So this is not the greatest. Uh, he's going to activate uh, Bishil Magma Hot, which is actually like pretty good for us. This is this actually makes the hand rip a lot better now, though. So I banish Scream and then I, I uh, Ash the uh, Magma Hot. So now I can use Baron to pop it, and it's like I it's almost like I double hand ripped him at this point. I did have to waste my ash though, but it's pretty good. And then I have protection for the boss stage. So since he's playing tier limit, I don't like cards that destroy because all the tier limit cards get like a f bonus effect when they're destroyed for some reason, because it's pretty neat. Um, so I um, get I get Itargara, which lets me banish cards in the field. So he's gonna maxi. He's gonna draw a card. I don't really care because I'm not special summoning anymore this turn. Uh, so he his mills didn't whiff necessarily because he did hit snow, but everything else, the other two cards are bad. But then he played foolish burial, sends Cal back. We're gonna have to negate Cal back. And then he sends uh, Snow, banishes all these cards. I banish his Merle so he can't go into Sprite Sprint, which is another combo they do to send a tier limit name, and it's GG. So, good game. Uh, this game would have been, like, super, super over, though, if I was actually just playing the, the other generator card, like the, the, the XZ card, because there's no shot he does anything with that card. <laughs> Cause, just, cause I don't even know if you can re really respond to it. Like even if he he activates snow, I can suck from field great or graveyard. So hello, we're here with game number two against Venacomisen, and he's playing Sprite. So I use Imperm on Elf. I mean on Jet. And the reason why I always Imperm Jet, and you guys could disagree with me, but if he has starter, if he doesn't have starter in hand, and uh. I just want to keep him off of their starter, and if I can't keep him off the starter, I want to also keep him off of Smashers if they already have starter in hand. I just don't want to deal with those cards. They're really annoying, and honestly, like, most good players, they, like, before they go into Gigantic Sprite, they're going to be able to have a way of, like, if I let him get starter, right, he can search for either Carrot or Red with starter, or just go into Blue and then do the same thing, you know what I mean? Uh, or if I interrupt Jet, it forces him to now pick, uh, well, am I going to summon Swap Frog or am I going to summon Blue so I can search for, like, my negates? 
So I, I, I prefer it. I don't know exactly what ex what card. It's a pretty big contention between me and other people. I think Jet's a fine card to negate, personally. It's better than negating blue, in my opinion. But maybe I'm wrong. The spells are really annoying. And plus the trap's really annoying, too, if they're playing it. So... It goes into Carrot, goes I IP, and it is set. Alright, so this is a board I have to deal with. Not the worst board in the world for me to deal with. I think it's manageable. I play Boss Stage in case he draws a card. Which he's going to summon blue, which is going to pretty much force my opponent to interact because it's Boss Stage. Here we go. He activates Max C. I chain uh, World Legacy Monstrosity so I can stop it. So if you guys don't know Nidhogg, this card's really, really good because it only costs uh, one card. So like it can tribute itself and then just negate a summon. It's like a solemn. Now I do a, I do a play here that really pisses me off. Because in my mind, I'm like, okay, this is called by the grave. Like, I'm like, it's either called by the grave or imperm. And I'm like, there's, like, I feel like it's called by the grave, right? Like, that's what I was getting inside my brain. He goes into Herald. I go to pop it, and it's imperm. Because I didn't, I didn't want to get rid of Nidhogg. Because, first of all, it's, like, way better on the field. Because I'm going to get a bunch of tokens next turn anyway. But it's kind of annoying. He ends up going into Avermax. It's fine. I set the World Legacy Monstrosity. And the reason I set this is because when I'm done using all the tokens, I can special summon uh, two cards out of the, the deck. I can summon, like, Har or something out of the deck. Which seems pretty good. So here's Har. I guess not Har. I can summon the Banish one, Yutongar. Yutongar or whatever. So this is hilarious. We don't negate Swap Frog and Herald the fact that makes it so like it the Swap Frog gets banished. So I'm like, oh, okay. Well, yeah, Swap Frog, go for it. Then he plays Jet. He adds a starter in hand, and uh, we're gonna rip, hand rip him. He goes into Gigantic Sprite, and this is where I choose to do my assault. I'm gonna Nidhog him. He's going to activate his Herald. I'm gonna. Negate. And now, I, if I want, I can use Loptar to search into something else. Pop everything. And he loses. And it's kind of sad because he lost the time limit. Which is really bizarre. He lost the time limit. But I actually felt like we could win that match. Like, I really felt really, really good about that match. Because I still haven't used this card's effect. I could have gone into Jayla. Jayla, bring back Mardell. I searched for the the trap card. Or I can search for another generator card or something like that. Probably the trap card. And then I can activate this on Mardell. And uh, get two more bodies. Use the Banish. You know, There's a lot of things I could have done there. So I, I feel like we we're definitely going to win that in the long run. And uh, yeah, I felt pretty good about it. So... Let's go to the next one. Alrighty, we're here with game number three, and we're playing as Yuma and Astral, and our hand is pretty juice. We're going to do the... Uh, pretty much... Okay, this is annoying. Our opponent ashes us. So, with our opponent ashing us, there's uh, a few different routes I could take here, and uh, I'm going to take this rat route I'm going to do here. Boom. Here comes Mardell. Mardell! Boss quest. We're gonna shuffle the Nidhogg back into the deck. We get boss room with boss stage. Pretty great. And now we're gonna go into Phantom. The reason why we use both of those cards... Again, everyone told me you go for hand rip. The reason we use both of those cards is because if these cards, since I use their effects, if they go... If they go to the graveyard, they're going to get banished. So since we exceed them, we can recycle them, which is actually super useful. 
So we hand rip him. We hit. The, our opponent is playing. Uh, he's feeling the flow as Yuma. I go into Har. I play this deck. I've played his deck a lot. Like I'm very familiar with uh, Utopia, so I know exactly what to negate and what to stop. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty easy match, I would say. We're gonna init in immediately activate Boss Room here, and the re there's a re good reason for it, right? Uh, the reason why I want to activate Boss Room is because we have this Trias Hecaria in the graveyard, which is a quick effect that you can special summon from hand or grave, and I want to use Har's effect. If I use Har's effect, I'm going to tribute Har with Mardell, and this is going to allow me to uh, negate one whatever he's trying to do, and then I can also uh, get this effect off, which lets me pop a card in the field and draw two cards. And the reason why I want this up is because he has Call by the Grave. This opponent, will, this will actually negate Call by Grave's effect. So, so we're gonna actually use his effect to make it force him to discard. He goes in Utopia double. We never want to negate the first effect here because all it's doing is grabbing Hyper Rank Up Magic. Pretty much wait until he uses this effect. You use the negate. Boom, boom. And he just concedes. I mean, I know these aren't super interesting, but I'm going to explain why they're not super interesting. Already, we're here with the last game, and this game's actually pretty good. This is a good game. So, Kuji Carriers, we're going to activate this. We're, this is a good game because I'm a psychopath, and I wanted to do psychopathic plays. So, Vala comes out. We're going to bring out the Lop Tier. Target, target. We're going to activate Mardell's effect, which adds another Vala. This is a psycho play. I do not recommend doing what I'm doing because this is like really stupid. I just wanted to double hand rip my opponent. Because <laughs> I wasn't able to do it most of the night, like pretty much all night. And I was like, I want to double hand rip him. Let me do this. So here. Bam, bam. So now we go into Utopic Draco Future. Now, I'm actually going to say this right now. This hand is not even necessarily bad, right? Like, like, like I have Maxi against this guy playing Adam Spader, right? I have a monster negate, and this card's going to become Nidhogg. Because remember, Nidhogg only has to have, like, one card to thing. And we have Imperm. Actually, a decent amount of disruption. Now, would it have been, like, ten times better if I just got boss stage? Yeah, probably. Normal summon Coking Mirror. Very good draw from him. Plays this. Activate Imprim. Okay. He goes into Charmer. I'm going to negate the summon because uh, I do have an Earth card in the graveyard and I don't want him to rank up to three. Right? Boom. We dealt with Moltz's hand. Last card is I'm going to negate this because uh, I just don't want him to get a rock on the board. Uh, but this is going to be my downfall because my opponent is better at the game than I am. So he just he just naturally has Block Dragon. And then he suicides the Block Dragon into my Utopic Draco Future. Uh, so he's going to actually be able to play through some stuff here. He hits one card off of this. I am drawing cards though, so I have to be pretty happy about that. Here's Baguska. Baguska, by the way, if someone does Baguska pass and that's their play, dude, Generator Boss Stage is going to be your best friend because you're just gonna, every turn that they wait, you just generate so much value, it's gonna be GG. So, here we go. You play this. I'm just thinning out the deck now. We have Ash. We got a pretty good, decent amount of interruption. So, my opponent's one top deck. Their one top deck is Ash Blossom, and it just stops my boss stage because uh, I can't negate with this card. So, uh, I guess he's just a monster at this game. Here comes Transverser. I have to negate this, or I do nothing. Now he has Kokimira, but he already normal summon. So, then Block Dragon. 
So this this was by far his biggest mistake. I was actually saying on stream if he just went Apoloza, I lose like I'm probably gonna have a very very tough time. Because if he went Apoloza, he would just negate my uh, Ash Blossom. He, can, he doesn't need a chain block. So now I just hit Block Dragon with the Ash. He activates. He pops my boss stage, which is fine. And now it's gonna be the standby phase. He's gonna activate this. Which, really stupid play. I'm just going to negate it. I steal it. I can go into un Unchained Abomination. Uh, but even other than that, like, it's just, like, super, super over for me. I kind of have, like, full gas at this point. Um, I also have uh, Vala in the graveyard, which I can just send Generator Boss Fight to the graveyard to Special Summon Vala, which would bring back uh, Mardell, and Mardell can search something, too. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of options I have here, but he's just going to concede after I steal his monster, which is understandable. So let's go into the recap and we can talk about the deck and everything about it. Hello and welcome to the recap. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing and liking the video and leaving down a comment what you want to see next. Um, and also joining our discord. Our discord is free. It has 500 plus members. It's pretty active, and we host tournaments every Friday, and that's where the tournament info is. So let's talk about the deck, though, right? Uh, the deck, the deck, the deck. First of all, why did we only have four games? And I'm going to tell you this right now. When we had good hands with this deck, our opponents just conceded immediately. It was very annoying. It was very frustrating trying to get like good matches to actually show. Because my opponents didn't want to play the game. They just con conceded immediately. So I'm like, okay, well, like if I, I like played Vala discarding like Mardell and I had World Legacy Monstrosity, my opponent would concede once I played Monstrosity. Which is understandable because I'm going to double hand rip you and then set up like boss state, like pretty much set up full combo, which is pretty annoying. Uh, but it would sucks because I'm trying to get footage, you know what I mean? Um, I know I didn't really show that many games with this card, but this card, just trust me when I say this card is absolutely insane because this is non-targeted removal too. Like, like remember that game where, uh, the, the Mech Knight Crusadia, Avermax, like they, they couldn't pull, like they, they ended up time limit win for me, right? This card by itself would let me out Avermax like super, super easily. And I get, like, a big, juicy fucking lizard on board. Or, not lizard. I guess it's kind of like a lizard. It has, like, feet and stuff. I don't know. It's kind of disturbing. I'm pretty sure this is from uh, Viking myth, like, uh, Viking mythology. Uh, like, the world serpent. But, um, yeah. So, like, it was just really frustrating. I, it was very hard to get good games. But let me just tell you something about the deck. In the beginning... My first like 10 matches, I was just, I got so tilted and for good reason. I got max seed every turn, my turn and my opponent's turn. I was getting super poly. You guys can watch the VOD. The VOD's on Twitch. You guys can watch it. I was getting super polyed. Like, I would either, like, sometimes open bad hands, like, just hands that just have, like, all hand traps or something like that. Uh, it's just, it was just so bad. It, it really was. But I will say, once I got into the groove with the deck and uh, I wasn't getting max seed every two seconds or I actually drew one of my counters to maxi uh, the deck played a lot better it went like pretty smooth I would say it went pretty smooth uh, how is the deck though right I would say the deck's pretty good uh, we were able to climb to master four with it from master five but we were very close to hitting master three but I got kind of tilted at the end there uh, so it definitely has a capacity to hit master one. So if you get good at the deck and stuff like that, I think you could hit master one. Remember, I was also trolling some of the stuff I was doing on the, uh, stream was literally just trolling for the stream. Well, not trolling, but like, like I was asking people, oh, you want me to do this? Like, you know what I mean? Like me going into the carrier and stuff instead of going into... Uh, the boss monster like that that's definitely gonna cost you some matches so 
Uh, I think this deck is still pretty damn good. I'm going to give this... I'm actually going to give it higher than you probably think. If you watched the stream last night, you probably think I'm going to give this deck like a 4. I'm actually going to give this deck a 7.5. I think it's pretty good. I think... Is it bricky? Yes. This deck can brick. But I don't think it's as bricky as some other decks. Like, I mean... Like, yeah, it's bricky, but like... If you open Loptar, I mean, the deck kind of does what it needs to do, right? You could, bare minimum, go into Mardell. Mardell grabs boss stage, and then you have at least, like, boss stage going on. And maybe a few hand traps, you know? Uh, uh, Gamma's really nice, too. Gamma, like, works really well with the deck. Um, even if you Gamma, I know we don't have a level 8, but you go into IP. And IP, uh, if you read this card, you just need a Link Monster and two plus monsters. So that means you can use the tokens that you get from boss stage. That's why this card's in the deck. Because you can use the tokens from boss stage to go into it. Uh, so that's another solid combo. Uh, but yeah, this boss monster, I wish we could have gone into it more. Uh, but yeah, it, like the games are just not... Like, people just leaving left and right. So, uh, it really it really does stink. Because I really wanted to play out some, like, a lot more interactive and fun matches. But uh, people don't want to play them. Uh, especially when I was in Master 5. I think it's because majority, like, especially the beginning games I was playing, a lot of people are in Master 5. And, like, dude, nobody gives a shit about leaving. They just leave immediately. So, I think the sweet spot is probably playing our games in Master 3, Master 2 because people are actually trying to win. They'll stay in longer game. They'll stay in games if it seems hopeless just because uh, they want they, they want to get their uh, they want to see if they can get the win. You know? Uh, on a tier scale I'm going to put this, obviously this is definitely rogue tier. Uh, if you run into it, it definitely is. It's a spooky deck. If they, if they pop off it is a spooky deck. Because think about it. You can technically go into a Baron de Fleur, or not not even a Baron de Fleur. I mean, you could end on a Baron de Fleur with uh, Generator Boss and with Boss Stage, with possibly a Boss Room too, which is like kind of like a negate almost, and end with a hard negate too, like on top of it. It's kind of gross. Uh, the deck also has like a big weakness though to evenly match. So, like, if you get evenly matched, it is brutal. Extremely brutal. Because you have all these tokens. So, think about that. You have the tokens. Means everything goes bye-bye. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. I like the deck. Maybe it's a 7. Maybe not a 7.5. Seven 7.5 and a seven and a might be too much. I'll give it a 7. I do like the deck, though. I actually really like... I, I'm not angry about crafting this. Like, I, I didn't have to craft too many cards. I had to craft both of these, and I had to craft a Mardell. But it's 90 nine UR dust. It's not too bad. Uh, I'm not mad about crafting it, though. I actually do like the deck, so... I think you guys will be happy. If, if you like this archetype, and you're, like, interested in, like, boss stage and stuff, you played it before, uh, boss stage got a lot better. So, like, this deck is a lot better than it was before, so no complaints. Uh... So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys want to see next, and goodbye.